Um, well, like a typical Monday, just quickly recapping last weekend, um, after being able to watch the tape, uh, appreciate our guys' effort. I thought we uh, had a higher level of execution for a longer period of time, I think in all three phases. You know, offensively, obviously, uh, kind of what I thought on the game, Jake really played well. Decisions, I think he's accurate with the ball. AP ran well, well. Old line did a good job. Uh, so that was nice to, and really their responses in the third quarter after the UCLA get some scores for us to come back and get some scores was huge. Defensively, still think we show up in the backfield. We got to continue to grow in the on the run defense end, but uh, we had some opportunities, just missed some tackles. And, you know, credit to those guys. They got some athletes, teams. I thought we played really solid because uh, they had some dangerous weapons and, and responded from the previous week. So overall, obviously pleased. Went back to work yesterday uh, watching the tape, and now we're moving on. Um, to a really good opponent coming in here Saturday. Um, been able to watch a little of tape last night and this morning. Um, physical, well coached, and it's really both sides of the ball now. They've been known for defensive play for a long time, and they're really good. But I think it's really impressive to see what they're doing offensively, possessing the ball. Quarterbacks playing at a high level, they can run the ball. Um, and so we got our work cut out for us, which we're excited about. I mean, you want to play against good opponents back at home, homecoming. Uh, Always brings an added level of uh, excitement, and um, these guys will uh, be coming, and our guys got to put some work in and, and let it all hang out on Saturday. Yeah, you mentioned Utah coming in here. Uh, they like to run the football, do it really well, and they stop the run really well. How much yeah. of this game is going to be determined up front on both sides of who's going to be able to do what they want to do? Yeah, I think oftentimes football games start up front on both sides, and uh, I mean, they've been dominant on run defense. I mean, by far leading the league, stopping the run, and they've been doing that for a long time, um, which, you know, we've been able to run the ball too, and so it's not we're going to shy away from trying to do some of that, uh, knowing that it's going to be uh, tough at times. And, and you know, three-yard, four-yard runs sometimes are going to be really positive. Um, they do run the ball not only just with their backs, but the quarterback can extend the play and, and do some stuff, dynamic dynamic players. So that will be a, be a challenge. You talked about you know, we talked about this Saturday night. You know, obviously Isaiah's had some huge games, but you mentioned it a lot. Other guys stepping up. But looking back at stuff, how impressed are you with what they were able to do, and how big was that for you guys? I mean, he still had ten catches or whatever, but mm -hmm. have those other guys come up on fourth down plays and in those big plays that you guys had? Yeah, it was uh, especially Colby talking about that fourth down. I mean, Colby catches a couple of huge balls. His first catch, he you know breaks a tackle, goes down the sideline for a huge explosive, setting up the first score. And then he sets up another score on that fourth down catch. You know, Noah had a couple critical catches and extended the play after he caught it. Uh, Tyjon comes up huge on third down, with, down the middle of the field. Tegan gets his first touchdown. You know, so we need other guys to contribute. Obviously, we want to get Hodge the ball the way he, he can do some stuff, but he can't be our only answer. Um, a very impressive win. Um, how do you balance the fact that you want your guys to feel good about that win, but that you want them to... to yeah. Refocus on this week's game. Yeah, we uh, obviously you, that's what you're trying to do is win the game, and they should celebrate that. But there's only a short window of time that you're doing that, um, and that's really after the game. Get on the plane, come on back, and sleep on it. Uh, we talked about the approach is not changing on Sunday in regards to taking a look at the film. We didn't play perfect football. There's a bunch still to clean up. Um, they should gain some confidence, though. I mean, that's what you're working to do is, you know, finish games. We finished that game, and so we should add some confidence. But we're, these guys are very aware of what we got in front of us. The, you know, Utah and then what the schedule is left. We got some good good teams on the, on the horizon. I know we've talked a lot about Jake, just, you know, the great performance he had as player of the week this week. And also Daniel Rodriguez, I know. He's been doing a good job all year punting. Yeah. That, that 62-yarder and then the drop kick thing on there. How cool is that to see him? be rewarded and how big has he been for you guys so far? Yeah, he's been big. He really, he's, he's punted the ball really well. Um, and we felt confident going into the season. He had a great experience last year, did some really good things and then coming back. And and it, he's got a unique skill set. We're not always kicking it the same every time we're punting the ball. Uh, we're moving him at times. Sometimes we're keeping him in the pocket. So uh, he works really hard at his craft. And obviously, the, yeah, the little onside kick that we get, I mean, there takes a little level of skill that D-Rod worked on for a few weeks to get that done. How'd you come out of the game? Nothing major, um, you know, obviously the, the typical bumps and bruises, but uh, nothing major. Still hoping to get a couple of guys back. Jalen Moore, close, not, not there on, on Saturday. Hopeful for him this weekend. Um, I think Jamar will feel even better. He hasn't been 100% the last couple of weeks, and hopefully he's closer to that this Saturday. 
you mentioned the, the onside kick. Uh, had you put that drop kick in you know, from the start of the season? And is that the kind of thing that right. you know, people are going to have to maybe watch? I, you know, we not at the start of the season. We had it in for a couple of weeks now, and we'd been working it. Actually talked about it. We're going to kick off from the 50. Let's try this thing. Um, and so we didn't have it in fall camp, but, you know, Coach Cook is in that crew is always looking at, at cool stuff out there trying to find an edge. They scored to get it within 10 with, like, like a little under nine minutes left, and you guys had that seven-minute drive there that, that Jay capped off. Just how mm -hmm. impressive was that drive for you guys to – milk the clock, and, yeah. and what was your kind of approach going into starting that drive? Yeah, it was, a, it was a big, really finished the game type drive. Had a couple of huge third downs, especially when I think it was third and eight. Jake steps up in the pocket, hits Hodgins over the middle to convert there. It was a monster play in the game. And then, yeah, we want to be able to gain some first downs, eat that clock, and it it got done. I mean, the, the old line did a great job. We were able to run the ball a little bit. I thought Brian called some good plays because it wasn't all just dive inside. Like, he's creating some things. Gave the around to Tajon, you know, ran naked where Luton keeps the ball. So, uh, diversity in the play calling to, to win the game. Uh, Coach, you know, last week you were talking about playing a full four quarters, and that's something you did against UCLA. How do you do that and replicate it against, like, a better team? Uh, yeah. Utah? Yeah, it's another chance to do it. Uh, again, it comes to – your preparation during the week and then trusting that preparation on Saturday. Um, execution is going to be uh, of the utmost importance against a good – this is a good football team we're playing. I mean, on both sides, on teams, they got good athletes starting the line of scrimmage, so nothing's going to be easy or given. We're going to have to go earn it. Coach, Jake got National Player of the Week. Could you talk about his game and his improvement, what he's doing for you? And also, we, we could probably debate this on our show, but can we say – can we talk about no interceptions, or is that like baseball? We don't talk about it. Yeah, no. We're obviously not talking about it a ton. Um, he, you know, he's just making some great decisions with it. Uh, he's getting some help, too. I think our protection there, you know, the ball's not, you know, he's not getting flushed too often. Um, I mean, shoot, even early in the game, Hodges, ball gets tipped the line of scrimmage. Hodges makes a play so the thing's not intercepted. Um, but he's, he's really improved his game from uh, last year, and I think he's playing with a ton of confidence, and he's got a ton of confidence with the guys around him because I think those guys can play at a really high level. And it's not just interceptions. You guys aren't turning the ball really over at all. I mean, how important is that to, to what you've been able to achieve offensively and how yeah. important you going forward? Well, it's, a, you know, it's a vitally important. And, we, yeah, our number is really good after, after five games, but that number really has nothing to do with the 60 minutes we're going to play on Saturday. And, you know, that stat is just a weekly that game stat. And so uh, – we, we definitely emphasize it, but we, I don't think we're overcoaching it. You know, we're not trying to play to not turn the thing over. Uh, we're just talking about uh, keeping it locked up, making some great good decisions with the ball, but still erring on the aggressive side of, of trying to make some plays. I know you guys gave up quite a few yards, but you made UCLA take seven, eight minutes off a, a thing. I know you want to get off the field, but if is that the, the next best thing if you don't is to make them – work so long yeah. to score that it shortens the game in a sense? Yeah, it is. I mean, you want to make them earn it. Um, obviously, you want to get off the field on third down or create a turnover, but if that's not coming, staying away from giving them a bunch of explosive plays and making it easy. Uh, and then we gave up a few. We really did. But um, they did take some time off the clock, which was huge at the end of the game. You touched on Utah coming up. Quick scouting report. What do they like to do? Yeah, they can still run the ball. I think that quarterback's, you know, the way he's throwing is really efficient with it too. Um, diversity in, uh, in what they want to do in regards to the scheme. It's not just like one formation and run the same stuff. I mean, you always get some unique things. Uh, and they've got some perimeter players that can make some plays. So uh, it's a, it's a dif difficult scheme to, to prepare for. Are you surprised at all at s some of the results this year in the Pac-12 Conference? Not totally surprised. I just think this thing is competitive. I think uh, each week, every game, um, you gotta you got to play well to win in this league because there's a good players, some good coaches going on. There's some tough environments to play in. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. And one thing that's come up this year, uh, last thing, one, one thing that's come up this year is, uh, and it comes up every year, the SEC and how they schedule and, and competition. Do you have an opinion or are you too buried in what you're doing about the conference itself cannibalizing it and, and, and having the nine games and then uh, and having it be, does that hurt or help in the end? Right. You know, I haven't put a ton of thought into it because, like you're saying, we're, we're in game modes. I do appreciate the conference in regards to how competitive it is, uh, the quality of football getting played. 
and uh, I like being able to go in week in and week out and play against some really good opponents with have some really good coaches with some good scheme and, and finding out where we're at. You mentioned uh, you know, uh, being able to stop the run. How uh, happy have you been with you know, the way your defense has done that this year, and, and particularly the defensive line? Yeah, I think we're better than last year. Obviously, after five games, you wanted to be at that place. At the defensive line, I think the line of scrimmage has been better. Uh, I think we're in the backfield more. Um, and so those, there are some positive ends to that. I still think we can make some steps in, in run defense and some of our coverage. But, uh, but again, you're playing against some good skill now. I mean, these offenses, you know, numbers say this, that, and the other. I mean, every team we play has got some skill. And uh, they're tough in space. You get them into space, it's tough to bring them down. So I think we made some strides. Coach, I look at... Utah's defensive numbers, and they're mind-boggling in this era. To give up 53 yards a game on the ground and 282 yards a game allowed. Yeah. And that's unheard of in this era. So what do you see it just sort of being all those incredible numbers a function of? Yeah, I think, uh, well, it starts with the talent they got and, and at the line of scrimmage. I mean, this defensive line presents some real problems. They affect everything in the run game and pass game, affecting the quarterback. Play aggressive style, man coverage. They're not going to shy away from it. I mean, they make you earn it winning one-on-one. -on -one. They got compliments in their scheme, so it's not always the same call. Um, and they've just been doing it for a long time, uh, in this scheme. And Coach Witt's done a great job. So, uh, yeah, they are good and presents problems. Your own defense, how big was it, Coach, to, after you score, they go for it fourth and one, and you yeah. get a TFL there? Oh, that was huge. What you could feel. Totally. It's totally huge. How you want to start the game. Um, and I get going for it on fourth and one. We've done it before back back there, I mean. Uh, but for us to come up with that huge stop and then get seven uh, really changed the dynamic in that game. Okay, thanks, Coach. You mentioned the plays – that. The play to Isaiah on the third and eight on the final drive. And then another catch on that drive, I think, where he got pinwheeled. It looked to mm -hmm. me like Hodgins at the end of that thing. He's not just a receiver that runs verticals or to the sideline. I mean, he's tough. Those catches were tough. Yeah, he's going over the middle, not not shying away from it. Because um, actually, he does a great job looting on that third down. He's actually trying to find Noah. Noah's not there. He stayed in the pocket. Protection was good. And then Hodges comes over the middle, kind of the second or third read. Uh, but yeah, Hodge can run a, a wide variety of routes. Uh, what's Cyrus's uh, injury status? You know, he's questionable. We'll kind of see how he goes this week. Um, he was definitely going to be out last week, but uh, I think he's got a chance. It all kind of depends on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Champ Fleming's uh, on the one play where AP ran him over. <laughs> What exactly was happening on that? And then later, Champ was run out of bounds but not knocked down. It looks like everybody gets fired up just watching him engage against bigger guys. Oh, yeah. The team likes to watch them. Yeah, Champ ain't going to back down, and he, he's out there flying around. The one he gets knocked down on, you know, he takes a nice, healthy, wide split. We think the ball is probably going to be well inside of him, but it didn't. Um, and so he's got the right leverage on the guy he's blocking, but AP just runs him over.